So we've spent some time learning about the law and learning about the gospel, and maybe you can already see how the two work together, law and gospel. You can read the Bible and find both. You can listen to a sermon and find both law and gospel working together to show God's heart. And that's important. We see God's heart through both law and gospel. Because God wants to see a world of perfection, of beauty, of generosity, a world of harmony and devotion and service. That's the law. That's the picture of a life done right, painted by God at creation, a portrait from his very heart. But to a world gone wrong, broken by sin and its side effects, crushed by the law's expectation, powerless to make itself right, again, God shows his heart by sending a savior. That's the gospel. Jesus is a picture of life done right, fulfilling the law the way we were meant to, exchanging his life for ours on the cross, his righteousness for our sins so that we can trust in his forgiveness and hope for a day when he returns and restores the world to a portrait of perfection, the one God himself imagined from the very beginning. God's Word, Scripture, the heart of God, are all expressed in law and gospel. <laughs> the law and gospel. The law shows me my sin. The law tells me I'm not enough. And the gospel shows me my Savior that tells me that, that Jesus is enough and that I have Him. The law accuses and condemns, tells me what I'm supposed to do. Uh, the gospel forgives and shows me all that God has done, is doing, and will ever do in Christ Jesus. The law is all about God's purposes, tells us what, what this life is all about. The gospel shows me God's promises and how life is really only found through the death resurrection, and the promised return of Jesus our Savior. The law expresses God's will, the good and perfect design he imagined for creation and for you. The gospel reveals God's works, those things he's already accomplished, and those things that he's promised to do, that they're still to come. And, and you know this, you, you say this on a week-by-week -week basis, you, if the law is the perfect, unchanging will of God, the purposes he has for his creation, well, the best way to sum up the law is to say, love God, love one another, and love your neighbor. That is a picture of life done right. Love God, love one another, and love your neighbor. And if the gospel is good news, the promises of God in Christ that point out not what we do, but all that he has done and is still doing, well, then the best way I can think of to summarize the gospel is to say, Christ died. Christ is risen. Christ shall come again. The law and the gospel, each in these three-part phrases that you say every time we're in worship together. Because you've got to have both. Because a world with no law is a world with no purpose, no ultimate goal, no objective standard of what's right and what's wrong. And a world of law but no gospel is a world of criticism with no forgiveness, a world of death with no hope, a world where things are broken and stay broken. And a world of gospel with no law is a world where, where we're all good, but it feels hollow superficial. It doesn't feel real, like a, like a hologram compared to flesh and blood. But you have a flesh and blood Savior who died, who rose, and who's coming again. So let's end with a challenge. You're going to read a sermon, Jesus's first sermon. And I'm going to challenge you to find both the law and the gospel. Find God's purposes 
and God's promises. Find God's will, what he tells us to do, what he wants to see happen in his world, and find God's works, what he's done or is doing now or, or will do in the future, the good things he's making happen all by himself. And this sermon is from Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15.